Hi everybody, trying this again. Hopefully you can see us this time. We'll just give you guys a couple minutes to jump on. But tonight, the question that we're answering is about feeders, what hay feeders we use. So we're gonna keep it quite short because it's chilly. If you have questions as we go along or afterwards on the replay, we would be happy to answer those for you. If you're new here, then welcome. My name's Lindsay, this is Jess. We're here every Tuesday at 7.30 answering questions that are sent in by you guys. So the question for tonight was about the hay feeders and what hay feeders we use. And um, we're gonna answer those questions, basically. You're gonna be the model, Dana White? Sure. You have your special outfit on? Oh, so you're you ready betcha. Okay. Canadian dresses. <laughs> okay. Okay, do you want to show them? Oh, there's a dance. <laughs> okay, so these are the stall feeders. They are made by Stall Grazer, and this is a corner feeder. And the the information, I guess, on this one is that it is one piece of really durable, high quality plastic. Uh, it's molded plastic. Yep, very durable. <laughs> um, it has a center cavity for hay, and then it has two side cavities for grain and salts or whatever you wanna put in there. Um, the idea is that it allows the horse to eat with their head down and with their teeth in alignment. It saves on feed, it saves on shavings, and it saves on labor. These are the ones that we use. These are the ones that we like. We spend a lot of time researching them. We've tried a lot of different ones, and in the end, I broke down because Jess talked me into getting these ones. <laughs> and now we both love them. Um, the first question was, are they easy to clean? And this one's quite dirty, so <laughs> do you want to tell us about how we clean them? Um, well, we don't clean here, as you can tell. As far as the inside goes, uh, we free cheat choice alfalfa to all of our training horses. So every once in a while, maybe about once every 45 days, We'll scoop out a little bit of the shaft from the bottom. And all we do, or all we do is take a grain scoop, scoop them out, and then they're good to go. Um, and I guess if you wanted to really clean them, they're just, you know, you could just wipe them down or wipe down the inside, but we find just cleaning out that shaft every 45 days or once every two months is enough for keeping them clean. Okay, and then the next question. So actually, while we're talking about that, some horses will dump, uh, dunk some of their hay in those corner cavities, and you just, you just scoop those out. You just take two screws, mm -hmm. and what's called a fender washer. You need to just talk a little bit louder. Can't hear two you. Two screws. Yeah. Um, we just put them on with two screws, and on the screws we use a big washer, they call them a fender washer. Most people, when they buy them, I just, I have a bunch of them, I just give them to them. And we just screw them on with a um, cordless drill, or, and that's it. That's all they're on there with. And then at the bottom, we don't screw that one in. They're screwed in from the top, so they're solid in there. They're in. Okay, one of the other questions was, do you have to um, fasten them? Yeah. If not, like, they would just move them around and you'd want to fasten them. I don't see why you wouldn't. And is it for free choice or do you put a certain amount of hay in? That was another question we had from Rob. Um, I free choice. I've always been a big, even when, before I had feeders, we would throw like a flake in, you know, five or six times a day to our training horses. So that they were always eating, because all we deal with is young, working bred horses. So I want mine to free choice. You can limit it and just feed less. Um, kind of why they work so well with us is because of free choice in them as much as we can. They um, they don't waste much. Like you can 
you know, just a little bit with a coat plate around with it here. And that's all the waste there is because it stays in that feeder so well. Okay, do they work as a slow feeder? That was another one of the questions. Can you use it as a slow feeder? Um, it will not slow down their feeding at all. Um, I guess I'm not really a big fan of slow feeders. I, my training horses, I want them to eat as much as possible so I don't slow them down for nothing. What they will do is the first time a horse goes into one of these, because we free choice so much, the horses usually will eat a lot right off the bat. And then after a day or two, they kind of regulate. They know they're not gonna run out of feed so they don't gorge themselves. And then they just pick through that all day long. They're always eating a little bit all day long. They figure it out that there will always be hay in there. If I have one that's an easy keeper and I want them to be slow fed, then I just feed them a little less couple times a day or I'll feed more um, not poor quality hay but less protein type hay less um, you know still good dry clean hay but maybe more grass hay or something if I have one that's a weight problem but for the training horses our big thing is let them eat as much as they want yeah sometimes what we'll do for a horse that doesn't need to put on any weight will be to basically fill it with grass hay and then put just a little alfalfa on the top and they work great as chairs they work great as chairs the kids love to play hide and seek in them when they're empty you can nobody asked this but i'm going to tell you this you can fit about the equivalent of a bale and a half um like a small bale small square we use big squares but small squares you can fit about a bale and a half in one of those so for us one of the things that we have really enjoyed is that it takes you don't have to feed as frequently so instead of feeding you know basically all throughout the day or morning and night or morning afternoon and night um we fill them up and and if you really pack them you can fill them up once every other day for a horse that's in here all, basically all the time and then for most horses they hardly waste anything like this horse has got just a little bit on the ground, but it's not all through the stall. So you can see how much easier it is to clean the stall. Keeps it, keeps it nice and tidy. And that's where Pro Panel likes to advertise that you um, save on feed because you're not throwing out as much hay. You save on shavings because you're not throwing, as, throwing out as much shavings with all the wasted hay that they stomp on. Um, save on labor. And you save on labor, whether it's yourself or whether you're paying somebody to do it. Yeah, everybody loves them. Anne saying she loves them. Kim, Nancy, they're great. I, I wouldn't go back. They are an investment. Um, and these are more expensive than other feeders that we've used in the past. But... Um, we sure like them, don't we? I think they're well worth the money. They're, they, they last. Mm -hmm. We've had these ones in. Yeah, like this is a horse that's not super easy on stuff. Uh, we've had them in all our stalls for four years, three, four years. Mm, yeah. And we haven't replaced a single one. And we've had horses that have done all kinds of things. Stand in them? Stand in them, yep crib on them they do all sorts of things mm -hmm. um valerie's asking how do i order these from you so valerie they're available on our tack shop if you go to our website he's cofal performance horses.ca there is a tack shop part where you can order and um my suggestion with ordering them is to, if you're local, to come and pick them up yourself because the shipping on them is quite expensive. That's the only downside with these is because they're one piece of molded plastic, you can't fit one inside of the other and they're heavy. So they are expensive to ship. Um, so if you're local and you can come by and pick them up, that's the best option. Otherwise, you can put your address in on um, the shop and you can get the shipping quote for them. And then 
you can make up your mind about whether you want to ship it or whether you want to try to hook up with somebody at a horse show. A lot of times we're taking them up to horse shows and meeting people places to save on the shipping for these. We don't have a ton of them in stock. Um, and there are flat feeders as well. How many do we have in stock? Not a lot. Less than 10, I think we have up there right now. Um, but we can get more. And then the other option is the flat feeder. So rather than putting in the corner, it's a flat feeder that you can put up against the wall. Do you want to talk for a second about how we use them around the farm outside of the stalls? Cause we, you're just right in the dark. We've used them, um, not just in the stalls. We've used them elsewhere. Um, I've put them in round pens when I was like if I'm turning horses out all day and when they're outside I just drilled like three or four holes in the bottom so that when it rained it would obviously drain out the bottom and then I just connected them to a piece of plywood put two holes in the, in the plywood and I could tie them to gates and then the horses were outside and could still be eating them and I didn't have to worry same thing no mess um, our running shelters um, for the yearlings. A lot of times I will put them up in the running shelters and then I put hay cubes in the side. Um, anytime, if good hay is harder to come by, then I'm feeding, I supplement with hay cubes. And then obviously I can just stack the corner sides with hay cubes. Um, and then the yearlings out in the running shelters, what I do is I just stick a bag of hay cubes in the bottom of the main part so they can eat grass outside and then get hay cubes free choice inside and then I put mineral on the side. Um, they're kind of a handy thing just to... We've put them up in our arena. We, when we've had to have horses living in the arena overnight or something, we've put them up in the arena. In the, the yeah. Just, like in the arena, it's nice because when you take them out, you don't have to clean all the hay off the ground. Yeah, you're not putting it on the ground. It's yeah. not messed up with everything. They're just easy. The other thing that happens with is usually, this horse isn't a super good example, but usually when you have the hay feeder in one corner, all the manure is in the opposite corner, which is kind of nice. Jess is asking, do you have issues with horses pooping in them? I feel like they're the perfect height and placement for that. No, because their heads are. Yeah, their head's in it. So they're Jess, we haven't done this stall. Like the horse's head is over there and then they're always pooping like, I shouldn't say always, but almost always they're pooping at, at the back in one of the other corners. And I'm usually like, the whole mess is away from the hay feeder. And then like having the hay on the ground where they move around as much mm -hmm. and they spread the hay and then they move around to find it, the hay's always in the corner. And they just stay a lot neater and tidier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are the perfect height for pooping in, but well, almost never happens. Never happens. I'm sure Lindsay and Joy will tell me that something has pooped in one at one point, but there has over a couple of years been a couple of them. But... Not like they do in a water bucket, though. Or some horses just like to poop in their water bucket. Mm -hmm. Um, feed time and aggression. That was one of the things that I noticed when we put them in was that the horses were a lot more settled. Once we put them in the whole barn and like how you said there, uh, after a couple of days, they figure out the hay's always there. Any of that feed time excitement where the whole barn gets kind of rowdy about getting fed and they start banging on their stalls and stuff like that. We don't have that. We do have it maybe a little bit. Like right now, we have a lot of young horses in who haven't been, you know, outside running like they should. But like it's January and there's ice. There's a couple horses that are kind of bouncing around. But none of that feed time aggression or like where the whole barn just gets wound up because they're hungry and they're anxious for feed time. Like that really has been minimized, even with horses that are, you know, when they come in, they're aggressive about their feed. I feel like that really gets minimized. It gets minimized because when I come in first thing in the morning and we go to top up all the feeders, they still have hay. Mm -hmm. So they, they have a full belly. It's not like they sat for eight hours and now they're wanting more hay. 
Mm -hmm. They've had it. I mean, as I'm opening the door, they're still... They still know, they have hay in there. Hay, so they just... It keeps them where they can have it all the time, which yeah. are where horses' guts are supposed to have. So what we usually do is, as we go through and we clean the stalls, we fill up the hay at the same time. It's not like one haying time. It's like we go through, clean the stall, feed up, fill up the feeder. Just go through one time like that. And then the same when we go to grain, they still have hay in front of them. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're not, they're not starving. They're not sitting there going, when is my next feeding? It's continuous the way that their bodies are supposed to be fed. Yeah, and we've talked a lot so about, about ul like ulcers horses with ulcers, yeah. That's a huge one for the young horses in training. You know, they can just eat a little bit all day long, keep, keeps their guts moving. Good. Are there any more questions in here? Um, are they designed for slow feeding? Nope. We talked about that a little bit earlier, Jess. They're not designed for slow feeding. We talked about um, feeding a grassier hay so that they still have lots of forage um, and they can eat all the time. Most of the reasons... The reason slow feeders got popular is because most people feed seven in the morning, six at night. And when they fed it two times, the horses would devour it and jump in. And everybody said, my horse is a pig. If you offer a horse hay continuously all day, they will monitor themselves. They will figure it out. So because of how people feed horses, they had to make the slow feeders so they could all day. This way, it's like they're out on pasture. Their head is down all day, a little bit, all at a time. And within a day, they figure it out themselves. And they eat the way they're supposed to. They're not aggressively trying to pick feed out of a net. Mm -hmm. They're not aggressively trying to grab something out of a cage. They are eating it easily, freely, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions here? Yep, Valerie, I will message you about some feeders. If there are any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. I'm trying to think of what else there is with these. Really not very much. The ones outside, um, only thing I can think of that you didn't say, the ones outside, did you say we poke a hole in the bottom? Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, thanks for being here with us, guys. We're going to keep this really short tonight because it's so cold. Thanks for being here, and we will see you next week. We'll see you next week, and send us in your questions about horses and riding and things that you need help with. We're happy to answer questions about any of the tack that we offer in our shop or, I guess, any tack, period. Um, if you are interested in the slow feeders, you can find them on our website, hayscofellperformancehorses.ca, or you can just shoot me a message. We'll be back next week. Hopefully it will be a little bit warmer. Have a good night. Bye.